I'm David Duncan. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Fedora 35 or Fedora Cloud uh, Working Group, and um, I wanted to talk to you today about today here in November, not in August, um, about Fedora 35 and tell you why you should use 30 Fedora in the cloud. So um, we're uh, part of the focus of our special interest group is uh, building the images. And um, we consider that uh, our responsibility to do that for any cloud that we possibly can. So we want to make sure that there are images available pretty much everywhere. Um, some of the images that we, we work on today are the GCP cloud images, uh, the Vagrant images, and um, then obviously the Amazon cloud images. And then we have a base cloud image that can be used in many different places. Um, uh, OpenStack, uh, uh, different types of virtualization. And then we have just a standard compressed raw that you can take and do many things with by converting it through uh, the various tools that are available. Um, we're working on multiple architectures. Uh, we support x86-64 and Arch-64 uh, directly. And then S390 uh, we do um, with uh, with some friends, and um, and uh, that has been an interesting thing for Fedora 35 uh, because we've made some changes. Um, uh, we have a biweekly meeting on Thursdays, uh, 1400 UTC, and um, uh, the Cloud Sig uh, Pager has. Uh, has a list of people who want to be notified. If you want to be notified, uh, hang around in the Pound Fedora Cloud uh, channel on Matrix or IRC, uh, or participate in the cloud list, or both, hopefully, and uh, add your name, and we'll make sure that uh, we, we let you know when the meetings are starting every time. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the group, and the directives of this group do not force, uh, do not include uh, being an expert at some cloud technology. The requirements for participating are an interest in participating. So if you are a beginner or an advanced user, that doesn't matter to us. We would love to have you there. We'd love to have your opinion and we'd love to, to make sure that if we're working on something that is a part of your um, your goals or your experience that you have an opportunity to participate. So please join us uh, anytime that you feel, you know, any anytime you feel like uh, uh, you have an opportunity. So uh, we had a conversation not too long ago and some metrics uh, appeared in that conversation from Matthew to show a little bit about uh, how we're doing. And um, and uh, thank you, Matthew, for putting these together and, and uh, keeping, keeping such great metrics and to giving us something that we could rely on to tell us where we are in this, in this process. So thanks, Matthew. Um, but looking at uh, what are considered to be persistent, which uh, Matthew said are instances that uh, are uh, up for and up and reporting for more than one week. Um, the cloud is uh, roughly 15.2% of the of the um, uh, the cloud variants that are are being used for long term. Uh, and then, if you move as we move into the uh, ephemeral, those that don't report after one week, um, uh, this is. Uh, uh, um, you see that uh, it makes up a considerably larger, almost double, uh, the number of instances that are ephemeral, um, which is expected, right? Cloud is not meant, usually cloud is meant to be a fail-only architecture or up for a specific task and then down. And that is, uh, that's wholly expected that we would see a, a much larger uh, part of that, part of this going to the, um, what we call the ephemeral use. And on or out, this is not, 
just, I mean, this is the cloud images, but where they're used, uh, we're not, I don't think we're tracking that at all. Like we're not looking at whether or not this comes in from a specific public cloud or a specific uh, location. We're looking at what, what, the, uh, what the designation is in the release. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's shipped in, in Fedora 35. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, uh, hybrid boot. So one of the things that I think we we look uh, we look at uh, on the on the cloud side is um, the emergence of the UEFI support, and um, and that has not been as pervasive as we as you might expect. Um, a lot of the UEFI boot process that was uh, previously used for things like Windows was not uh, was emulated. It wasn't, in fact, actually UEFI. And this gives us uh, the, uh, the the boot parameters or the and the boot partitions that are required to do uh, both. So we can do both the UEFI boots. We can do um, uh, classic boot, but classic BIOS boot, and um, and we're ready to do new things. Um, for example, secure boot in the uh, in the cloud images um, when that becomes available, or uh, if that becomes something that our uh, users are looking for. And uh, big news: uh, we followed the trend that we you know is in Workstation here uh, by moving to ButterFS by default. Um, this adds a lot of, of um, capabilities that we didn't have previously. And I think this is going to be very interesting. I'm looking forward to doing some solutions based uh, uh, articles over the over the coming uh, weeks to show what um, uh, what this really means, because this gives us some some uh, ability to do some bind mount points and take control of specific component parts of the, or specific parts of the disk um, for uh, removing execution bits and things like that that we, we didn't have before, um, but, were, but are typically expected in things like CIS hardening or uh, STIG hardening, uh, things like that don't, don't uh, allow for an exception uh, around um, the partitions and since a cloud volume doesn't have partitions it is almost by definition an exception on every case uh, on every file system level case so uh, this gives us some some breathing room around those uh, those requirements and uh, makes it possible for us to be more consistent with them also uh, one of the considerations that we had um, you know if you're looking at server Server has uh, support for very large arrays of disks, and we don't necessarily have that in cloud. I mean, you can you can acquire a, a large volume of of storage, but for the most part, uh, the storage redundancy is handled uh, behind the scenes by the hyperscalers, and so we expect the uh, we expect that using ButterFS on top, even though it doesn't have support for things like uh, RAID five or RAID six isn't really a big problem because uh, those are those RAID types are being used behind the scenes in the hyperscaler storage. But you can look at the whole uh, configuration and, and see that, you know, this is something we've done. And then in order to get this done, we had to push through several changes around uh, BIOS. We had to make some modifications in Anaconda. Um, there are some other considerations that we have for um, for next generation that I think will be, you know, that as they evolve will be exciting for us, like um, like full support for uh, ButterFS in the in the uh, boot sector uh, that'll that'll carry us over into a full fully ButterFS configuration. And uh, we made some changes in the cloud images for va for vagrant files. One of the things that we found was that there was a bug that was uh, increasing the size of the uh, the volumes for um, the the vagrant images to greater than 40 gig, which obviously nobody wants to download a 40 gig vagrant file. Um, that's 
pretty much antithetical to what needs to happen. But Chris Murphy and uh, and and Neil Gompa actually took care of uh, uh, creating a better trim experience in our um, in our kickstart configurations and uh, zeroed that out so that it would it would be appropriately resized during the vagrant configuration. So um, there's been some interesting uh, developments here over the course of the Fedora 35 release. Um, and uh, we are really, we, we had to stop, uh, sort of stand back and take a really good look at where we were and what we were working on and whether or not um, we thought that was a, uh, the, this was the right way, you know, right direction for us to go uh, to create cloud-based images. And um, we've made a decision as of uh, Thursday. In fact, we had a vote for the for throughout the whole cloud working group uh, to determine that we want to um, reestablish uh, cloud-based images as an addition, uh, so that we can participate more in the website uh, revamp and be uh, more formally associated with the addition status. Um, so we're working uh, right now on updating the product requirements um, so that our PRD is current and can be ready for review. Um, uh, but we also consider this to be a real responsibility. So uh, we're not we're not looking at uh, what it is that just needs to be done to be you know to have addition status. We think that the responsibility goes uh, much farther into um, into the community. And so we want to establish a pipeline for uh, ensuring that we're participating in the marketing and that we're participating in blog posts um, and also increase the number of testing and QA contributions. So I'll refer you back to the uh, first slide I put up here where I was saying that, you know, we're looking forward to having your participation. Um, there's a lot more things to do here, obviously, than just code on uh, on cloud images. So if you're looking at, um, trying to make, you know, create a scenario where you're working with other tools or utilities or uh, or, or different kinds of, of technology, then uh, we're excited to hear from you. Um, if you're looking at how you can help with the uh, QA, uh, we have a ton of things that need to be done. Uh, plumbing for tests in each one of the individual clouds. We've got lots of things that need to be done here that uh, we would love to have help with. Um, uh, and something that's near and dear to my heart, and I keep pushing this and I'll, I'll, I will continue, um, is uh, we really want to see uh, this develop into something where we're building solutions and customers or users really, not, not customers, but users want us to want to um, to develop, uh, they want to have understanding of something kind of end to end, and we want to bring as many people as we can into uh, qualifying and and seeing and looking at how those uh, solutions work, so that uh, so that people who are doing research don't have to question why they would want to use Fedora in their uh, in their solution requirements. If they have some study to do, we want to make sure that they understand that they can get all of the tools that they want inside of uh, Fedora Edition, um, similar to the way that the Neuro Fedora team works on their spin. Um, and to look at ways that we can collaborate and, and curate uh, those, those uh, sets of solution uh, configurations for, uh, for people to use in, um, in the future. And that means more articles, uh, more writing, um, better co collaboration with teams that we uh, are not really working with as much as I think we should, uh, especially OS Build. I really feel like OS Build is a is a wave of the future. And um, and then there are some really fun things going on in Cockpit now, um, even um, preliminary support for ButterFS in the uh, in the uh, storage management and uh, really look forward to putting a lot of effort and time into making those work together. 
And then uh, recently we've been t uh, chatting back and forth with um, some of the members of the server group to talk about uh, creating an image that's more consistent with their SIG goals. Um, and I think that that's a really important effort to be um, you know, effectively um, supporting other special interest groups for the work that they're doing. And I think we can do that with Workstation too um, in the context of virtual desktop interfaces. Um, so there are a lot of things that we need to focus on um, that are interesting to um, providers, like cloud providers. Um, and some of the things that they run in, some of the issues that they run into are the things that uh, are trend setting for them. And we wanna make sure that when they look for how they set that bar, our goal is to ensure that regardless of what that of what that uh, infrastructure is, that they look to Fedora as a leader in how they evaluate <clears throat> and identify themselves as forward uh, as a, as a forward leader in that in their space. Um, some of the things that they look to, and some of the things that we're trying to focus on, are like faster boot times, um, and then uh, we also want to have a faster model for uh, continuous integration and testing. Um, if we have more detail back from their, our providers that makes it back into Fedora um, just generally, especially in the QA process, the, uh, the information, that information can feed back uh, into, uh, into our development all the way down from the kernel. And we can run, uh, you know, we can run into problems long before the, the, um, the public provider or the providers make them public. And, uh, we think that that's a really important part is of, of our mission is to get in front of a lot of those uh, issues that would show up after uh, you know after the fact after after the pro providers make them public after the providers announce them um, and we want to make sure that we're uh, we're giving them enough information and we're getting enough feedback from them uh, that we can we can get that we can make changes even before we know what they're going to do. Um, <clears throat> some of the other things that we've thought about are um, that we have a similar mission uh, for the container configurations, and we think that might be a great fit for the Cloud SIG umbrella. Um, uh, we know that, and I know that those are, well, I mean, everything in Fedora is maintained by the people who have the motivation to, to um, uh, to uh, uh, to take on the projects, but uh, you know it's always been one of my favorite things that we don't have a uh, um, you know we don't have package owners. We have packagers, and those packagers do what's necessary to take on take on that space, um, take on the space that they want they want to uh, deliver in. And I think that that's a great experience. Um, Yeah, I think with that, uh, let's just move on to uh, questions and comments, discussions. I see the block of butter question has already been answered. I don't think I have to. Uh, I don't think I have to answer that one. Comments, considerations. Did I scare anybody? Rawr. <laughs> well, listen, you know, you all know where to find me. Um, I'll be around. And uh, if you have any other people who, who want to, um, uh, who, if you know anyone that you think should be involved, you know, give them a nudge, let us know that they're coming and uh, we'll, we'll make a place for them. Um, we have a lot of fun working on this project and uh, look forward to working on it for a long time to come. Thanks. I'm going to hang around in case somebody does have a question.
And thanks everybody for attending. It's been great. Jan, I think I think biweekly is enough right now. I think we have a lot of work to do and and there's a lot of chat. You know, we we have a lot of chatter in the in the in the um in the matrix group. Um if there's something uh oh there was something I didn't mention actually and that is that we really want to curate the tools um that are associated with the cloud uh cloud experience like the Azure CLI. Uh, oh, okay, thanks Matthew. Um, I think uh, the thing that we are going to put a whole lot of uh, time and energy into for the next year uh, is going to be first the UEFI space. And then uh, I think we're probably, I think what I'm looking most forward to is finding a way to, to uh, build uh, secure boot um, for, our, for our images. So that uh, customers, you know, users who are doing, who are trying to do something like a secure boot are going to do that. And then the other thing is the trusted execution environment. I really want to um, integrate the ability to run trusted code in, uh, in the trusted execution environment that uh, Intel created um, directly and to have a process for building the images for that uh, trusted execution environment in our in our process so that we know exactly what's going into that blob end to end. Um, each one of the the trusted execution environment I think is is one that we're we're going to try and focus on. And then tools, the the Azure CLI, the AWS CLI, um, you know the the uh, Google API tools, all of those are things that we're we're focusing in on really heavily. And I've got to say a big thanks, big shout out to Major Hayden uh, for for uh, building. A, I think the right number is a gazillion uh, dependencies for uh, for the um, the Azure CLI, and we're working on the same thing uh, together for the AWS CLI, where uh, there are. A gazillion dependencies, none of them make sense. So we're 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 working on that uh, together and uh, trying to make sure that those go through our uh, the the Fedora build process the way that we expect. So those are the things. Th those curations, I think, are the things that I'm most excited about um, moving from from 35 to 36 and beyond, and then. Um, uh, doing the work to become uh, become a real addition uh, once again, I think is is also heavy on our on our uh, plate. Yeah, and with that, I think we're. At closing time. Thanks everybody for for participating, and uh, see you in the next chat.